Um, so um, Jeff Porter is our next presenter, and he's going to kind of carry on with this theme of the CNMPs, talking about uh, development of a CNMP. Um, I told you earlier that Sandy was um, team number or member number two of the two-man team um, for the animal manure and nutrient management team, um, and Jeff is the lead for that. So uh, this is our our manure and nutrient management team. <laughs> Raw for that's right, yay raw. So. Go team, go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Amy. Uh, first thing, before I get started, I need a volunteer. Okay, <laughs> oh, no, I don't need you yet. I just, okay. just want to get it early. Just get an early volunteer. All right, thank you. That's, so you have no idea what's going on. This is not planned, okay? Well, what I want to do today is I'm going to share with you just a little bit about as how you know why we're doing this. Sandy hit that real well, but we're going to take it a little bit further as we go through the planning process of how you, each one of you can be involved. I think this kind of ties you in, Saka, with, with your question that you had here. How can we go about doing that? So Sandy's already hit about you know, when is it necessary. I'm going to touch on that just a little bit more. Why is it necessary? And then we're going to look at CNMP and planning and, and why we've, we've kind of uh, added a little bit more of what Sandy was, was adding to. And then what are some other issues? And then that's where I want to get you involved, the other issue part, okay? Do you have issues? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right, first thing I want to know, you know, what Sandy mentioned, we, when we need to do a CNMP, it has to be an animal feeding operation. Like, what is it? What's an animal feeding operation? That's the first thing I ask our folks in NRCS, and they're kind of going, uh, I don't know. So there's two criteria. You might tell me one. 45 days. 45 days. All right. You got that. Now, now what's the 45 days mean? In a year. In a year. Yes, it's over a 12-month period. It's not January 1 to January 1. It's in during any 12-month period, 45 days, that these animals are confined. All right? Now, if they just have that, then that doesn't mean that you meet the definition yet. So what's, what's the second one? You do not you, you do not have vegetation during the normal growing season. Now, you get down to Florida, what's the normal growing season? Like it's 365 days. <laughs> so this is one of the first things that I've got to start with when I'm working with, with our folks and, and even with our technical service providers is, you know, well, when do I have to put this in? Do you meet this definition? You've got to start here. If you don't meet this, you don't do a CNMP. You know, that, and they're going, really? So if I have pastured animals and that's all I'm dealing with, past, is it, all right, do you have any denuded areas during the normal growing season on pastured animals? Nope. Okay, you're done. You don't have to do one. So this is where we've got to start to know what, what is required and what is not required to do a CNMP. So, again, I go with that. So, so what's the big deal? Why is that an issue? Why is that a concern? Well, it comes down to, look at this. Every dot here is 20 farms that could potentially have a CNMP. We're talking over 250,000 CNMPs that could be developed if they came to NRCS and our folks are saying, no! <laughs> because, I mean, think about it. We, we, in the last five years, we did 18,000 CNMPs through NRCS and our, our partners. So 18, that's not even 10% in five years. Think about the workload this the, the potential workload with this. It's huge. So let's not be creating CNMPs if we don't need to for a site. Okay, that's... Sandy touched on this, this really well, that when we're putting together a CNMP, we've gone back to what we know. We are conservation planners. That's who we are, that's what we do. Instead of putting together these multi-binder things, that do just sit on shelves. You don't know how many landowners I've gone to. I say, can I see your CNMP? They don't have a clue what you're even talking about. And I say, how about the big book? Oh, that thing. And then you know, take off shelf, blow the dust off, and, and that's the, you give it to them and they put it on shelf. And that's the last time they look at it because they have no idea what's in this thing. They don't know, you know where to find anything in it. It was just, 
I, I, I spoke with, with one person who was putting something together. It was, it was three binders for one CNP. I went, oh, this is crazy. So that's why we went through and did the revision. We're going back to planning. We're following the planning process, just like Sandy mentioned, using our National Planning Procedures Handbook. And this is the format that we're following. And that's why we've taken a lot of the stuff out of the main document. It's not that we don't still do it. Most of the things that we did with the CNMP, we still do it, but we put it somewhere else. It's just not in that, that document that we give to the landowner. So they can now look at this thing and it makes a little more sense to them. Hope that makes some sense. We follow the nine steps of conservation planning. And one thing I, I want you to notice in here, you look at identify a problem. How do you identify a problem? You gotta go there, right? You gotta go to the site to identify a problem. How do you determine the objectives? How do you do that? You gotta talk to the landowner. So that means you gotta go to the site to go talk with the landowner. How do you inventory the resources? You go to the site. Okay, are you kind of catching something here? We need to go to the site. It's important that we do that so that we can help the landowner because we, we need to understand it's not in our CSS plan. It's not extensions plan. It's, it's not your regulatory uh, individual's plan. It's the landowner's plan. It's the landowner's decisions. And that's why this is so important that we meet with the landowner, talk with the landowner, walk the land, find out what's really going on out there. We talked about here the, the three resource concerns that we focus in on. And, and uh, one of the reasons that we only look at that, and I encourage folks, when we're putting together a CNP, don't address any other resource concerns. You say, well, why not? If you have more of them out there. This little black part right here, these letters, will tell you why. All of the practices of a CNMP, by regulation, not by our policy, but this came out in the Farm Bill, by regulation, all the practices must be implemented. That means they have to be applied on the field, on the ground, by the end of the contract period. This is a big deal. And I, you know, I've had states call me, well, I want to change that. I said, I can't. We have no control over this. This was Congress put that in the Farm Bill. So that's why I really focus in and say, let's only address these three resource concerns. And when you put a practice in the CNMP, we need to make sure that that landowner is going to implement that practice. Because if they don't, then they're not meeting that requirement. Now, what's the penalty? I don't know. I'll just be honest, I, I don't know what the penalty will be, but unless someone else knows. I mean, you, you can take the, their, their uh, financial assistance dollars back. You can deny assistance. I mean, there are things that can be done. Will that happen? I don't know, but it, it can happen. But that's one thing I wanted to mention. Again, it's a component plan. And what I mean by, mean by component, we're only addressing a few of the resource concerns. If you're doing a full-blown conservation plan, you'll be looking at all 31. And here we're just looking at the three. When we go and meet with the landowner, this is kind of what we see a lot of times, right? We've got all these, these puzzle pieces all over the place. And we've got to figure out what in the world we're going to do. How do we, how do we bring this together? How do we get the, the full picture? You know, as we're looking down the, the, the big picture, and, and we begin as we start having our conversations, we start putting things together, we start seeing a picture beginning to form, and eventually we have the finalized picture. And that's what our CNMP is. It's, it's the landowner's decision saying, this is the direction I'm going to go, and we have now a picture developed so that they know the direction they're going and they know what the final product's going to look like when they get done. This is one of the things that is, to me, is probably one of the most critical parts of a CNMP is the communication. Or I guess I will say the lack of communication that we've had in the past on putting these documents together. It got to the point where these things were getting so big, we didn't have time to go to meet with the landowner. We had to put this document together, this book. But now, hopefully, we've been able to, to change format a little bit to help with that, and communication is still critical. So why is it so important? This is just one of the definitions that I 
kind of put together. We want to help the landowner. Remember, it's not my plan. It's not your plan. It's the landowner's plan. You want to help them with the decisions that they need to make to address the resources that are out there. And that is going to require communication skills. Site visits, I've, I've stressed that, they're essential for a good quality CNMP. If you don't go out on site, how are you going to know what's out there? How are you going to know where the erosion is? How are you going to know, you know how many animals they have? The layout of the land. Uh, how do you know how the landowner operates? Site visit is so important and you've got to communicate between all of the involved parties. And I, I put this in here because, and, and I put technical service provider, but we also need to include extension, regulatory folks. We need to include all the individuals that are involved in these decisions to know what is the most effective uh, application for that particular landowner. Because just like Sandy was saying, every one of these farms that you go to is going to be different. They may have the exact same soils. They may have the exact same number of animals. But the landowner may operate differently. So you've got to be able to work through that. And so the communication part is so important of how you're going to, to make these things work. So I need my assistant. All right. Well, yeah, you, you can stay right. That, that, that's actually okay. All right. Now, what we have here, I want you to, I'm going to put something up here on the screen. All right? And there will be some words. But I don't want you to, to read the words. I want you to tell me the colors of the words. Okay? You probably have seen something like this before. Okay. So, can you just tell me the color of the words? Black, yellow, purple, blue, orange, red, green. All right. Thank you. Did she do well? Let's give her a hand. That was just a one. Okay, now, why did I have her do that? Think, think about this just for a minute. Was it hard? Yes. <laughs> and, it, and it is. See, many times when we're out there working with these landowners, they may say one thing. They may say, blue. But we know, no, if you really look around, and that's why site visits are so important, no, it's really black. And you have those conversations with the landowner. So you can truly understand what their objectives are. You can begin to understand what the real resource concerns are out there is through that, those site visits. So I, I, I do this just as an example of knowing that just because we hear something doesn't mean that's actually what's out there. So communication is critical to that. Uh, Sandy touched on this a lot about the, the format. I just want to focus in on this bottom part here, the case file, even though we're not putting all that, that stuff in the, the main CNP document, we're still doing the work, we're still doing most of the, the calculations and things, but we're now putting it in the case file. So if a landowner needs some of that information, if, if they need that for their permits, it's probably going to be in the case file. And that's where the landowner can get that from us. So maybe that, that'll help a little bit. With some of that so just want to just let you know we're still doing the work it just may not be in the same place it's where it was again uh, we need to understand it's not not everything's in the document you know we, we have we had the, the mass mortality conference that was held on Tuesday we have an emergency management I can remember what's that number again the uh, we have a mass mortality standard and every farm should have that as, as at least a plan as how we're going to dress if I have to do deal with mass mortality. Well, but we don't want to put that in the CNMP because what does it say? If you have a plan or a standard listed in the CNMP, you must implement it by the end of the contract period. If you don't have any mass mortalities, what does that mean? I have to go kill all my animals. No. <laughs> no, we just don't put it in there. Okay. <laughs> We, we put our, our, our forms, our worksheets, uh, the, the assessments, like the NACSAT that Sandy mentioned, that's where we're going to put it. So some of the benefits. You know, why do we do this? Why do we have a CNMP? Well, it does give a record. The landowner now has something documented. This is my plan. This is where I'm going. I, I see my, my road. It's the, my path is this direction. So it helps that landowner know what direction they're going. It schedules the events and the activities. They know that they're going to put a waste storage facility in 2019 
or a compost facility on another day. They know that information now so they can prepare and plan for that. It addresses those resource concerns, those three that we focused in on, the soil erosion, air quality, and water quality. We also have now concentrated all this information into hopefully a little smaller document that they will refer to and hopefully use more because they can find all those things and then nutrient management plan is there for them to land apply those things most effectively and environmentally uh, effective. So my contact information, that's it. Any questions? Let's thank Jeff for his presentation. <laughs> We have just a couple minutes for questions or comments. Yes. So most CNMPs, and as you talked about, are related to NRCS programs. What if I have someone that comes in to the office and just requests a CNMP to have a plan? Are we still kind of bound to that legal requirement if there's no contract associated with it? How do you know? Okay, uh, th that, that really comes down to that contract period is based on equip. Yeah. If they're not doing anything from a financial mm -hmm. reimbursement standpoint, I guess, from NRCS, you can make some adjustments to what the CNMP looks like. But that, that uh, contract period thing is only for equip. Mm -hmm. Yes, Aaron. Have you thought of doing an informal survey starting now instead of going to go talk to a producer and ask them to see their CNMP and say what? That would be a good thing to do. <laughs> doing it's another. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure how we go about doing that. Uh, we, I'm just gonna sound sorry. we have no sociologists on, on within NRCS right now. And those are the ones who used to do a lot of our surveys and would help us do that. We don't have that. Uh, so to get the information for the different landowners and those types of things, I'm not even sure, you know, from, from what we call our PII, that personally identifiable information, we, you know, we really can't give that information out. So that, that's, a, that's a tough part. You have to get a university cooperator to do a survey. Right. And, and, and then, you know, how do we get them their information without giving out personal information? So it, well, it's a tough thing. Oh, and, and I do. When I meet with a landowner, I ask them, you know, what do you think? How's your CNP going? And Maybe it's the number of books you have to blow the dust off of. That could be, yeah. How, yeah, how many, books, many books, books you have to... How many books you have to blow the dust off? Does that, 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 that could be, yeah. Real. It's all well, about impact, isn't it? That, the question is, I, I did see you have an implementation plan, but is there a validation plan? Well, that, that's what we do at the end. If you notice, the, the, the ninth step of conservation planning is to evaluate the plan. How effective was it? As, was everything, are they following the plan? Are there are any adjustments, any updates that need to be done? Because as Sandy mentioned, it's a dynamic document. Because it can change and it does change over time. And then is there a timeline on that particular product? Uh, that I'm not, no, I do not believe so, no. No, the, the timeline is, is only on implementing whatever practices uh, that, that are listed in the plan. So if they want to make an addition, then that can have some impact because if they still have to get it done within the, the contract period. 